that's hard to go after. <laughs> <laughs> well, it always is. It always is. Uh, but it is a joy and an honor to be surrounded by so many people who have been leading the movement and doing the lion's share of the work in this country to ensure that everyone can live in dignity in the richest nation in the history of the world. Last month, I proudly stood alongside incredible leaders like Representative Bush and fought to keep as many as 11 million Americans from becoming unhoused or unhoused. We said then that we would use every tool at our disposal to keep folks housed and mended. I hope you see that today. I'm proud to stand by her side and alongside all of my colleagues behind me. And of course, all the brilliant activists who have been doing God's work to get us to this place. Now, even before people started paying attention to the exploration of the eviction moratorium. As we continue this fight by introducing the Keeping Renters Safe Act. It was only a few weeks ago that we all stood here together after the eviction moratorium had expired. Many members were already back in their districts and the White House claimed that his hands were tied. So we knew better. We refused to take no for an answer. We couldn't just go home while millions of people were at risk of being kicked out of theirs. And after five long days staying out on the Capitol steps, our calls were finally heard, and the CDC, at our urging and at the direction of the White House, reinstated an eviction moratorium. Despite how hard we fought, and the many days that we stayed out on those steps, we know that the story does not end there. Just days after we got the CDC to extend the moratorium, or I should say just a month after, the far right 6-3 supermajority on the Supreme Court of the United States in a dangerous, partisan, and poorly reasoned, I would submit, decision, once again put many millions of people at risk of being unhappy. Shame on them. In the world's richest nation, no one should have to experience housing insecurity. The housing crisis, as you heard again and again today, is a policy choice. And all of us ran to make better, more empathetic policy choices. For the last year and a half, the eviction moratorium has kept millions of Americans struggling to pay rent, safe and housed amid the worst public health crisis in at least a century. And the same is true for the economic crisis that we now face. As the Delta variant continues to ravage this nation and the world, and the people who bear the brunt of the housing crisis find themselves bearing the brunt of, of that pandemic, we must do everything that we can to keep people safe, especially in communities of color, which are being most impacted, as you heard today as well. We have a moral obligation to do this to ensure that every person remain safe and housed for the duration of this pandemic and get this long after the pandemic yes. is over yes. because housing is a right yes. and we can yes. afford to do that congress is going to vote on a defense bill this week my goodness mm -hmm. That's right. just, just a, a fraction of that can be used to house all the people who are currently unhoused in this country don't tell me we can't afford to do that we spend money in this place every single day by giving the federal government the explicit power to issue an eviction moratorium, we are ensuring that never again can this rogue Supreme Court majority or any other court say that Congress has not authorized the executive branch to act to save as many as 11 million people from being unfairly forced out of their homes and thrown onto the streets. It never should have had to come to this. But here we are. When we said we were going to do whatever it took, we meant it. And I'm so grateful to do this work in partnership with friends like Representative Ilhan Omar of the great state of Minnesota, who is now going.